if we could if we could be better with each other and, and talk to each other more kind words, I think that's something I try to be able to have a kind place in my classroom. And I hope some of them realize that th th that we all can sort of be better to each other. Welcome to Inspiring Teachers, a show bringing you classroom tips, motivation and stories from successful educators. Join Tavis Beam and Danny Hogger as they explore the why of teaching. Welcome to Inspiring Teachers. I'm Danny Hogger. Tavis Beam is on special assignment. That just means he's still in his classroom because it's Friday and teachers never go home. But I do have a very special treat with me today. Uh, Ryan O'Donnell's here from Creative Ed Tech from Check This Out and from Talking Social Studies. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. This is a great opportunity to be able to talk and share. Hey, man, I'm always excited to talk to another social studies teacher, and I'm always excited to talk NorCal teaching, too. I was super excited to, when we were doing our research and just looking for people who are doing creative things in the world of social studies in teaching and really just in education, you came up and I, I saw a lot of what you do it looks really fun. It looks like you do a lot of technology, and it looks like you work very hard for your students, and that always is inspiring to me. And on this show, we hope to spotlight and encourage teachers and keep that spark and passion for teaching going. So could you tell us really quick, Ryan, how did you get into teaching? What was your journey into this profession? Uh, football. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was the classic. I was the classic football guy, uh, played football, went to college, played football, got out, didn't know what I wanted to do. And some people said, you should start trying to coach. And the next thing you know, I got it. I started coaching high school as a volunteer. And then they said, you should be able to work here. There's a job in special ed as an aide. I'm like, okay, well, I can be on campus. And then, hey, you may want to start trying to be able to work towards a job. Mm -hmm. And that slowly migrated into uh, some counselors saying, well, what do you want to teach? And I'm not. I don't know. We literally looked at my credits and they said, you're not far from social studies. And I'm like, okay. So I had to go back to school, got my social studies degree, and then slowly morphed into the, God, I really think I like teaching more than coaching. And so that just uh, took me down that road. Interesting. When you were playing football, you played college ball. Do you want to share where you played? Yeah, I played at uh, University of Nevada, Reno, UNR, just over, uh, I've been outside Sacramento now. So um, fantastic experience. Really loved it. Really defined who I was. Mm -hmm. Um but um, and I thought football would be the rest of my life, but I really kind of uh, love the way it evolved into something else. And what kind of lessons from football do you carry into teaching? I would say, I mean, there's so many of them. It's, I mean, it's part of my DNA, who, who you are, everything from being on a team and being collaborative and also how to be able to be um, help others. I think uh, being in a program where I was there for a long time to be able to see me evolve from um, very much like a teacher from a newbie to a consistent player, then how can I be able to see those who are younger than me and help them grow? And, and that all happened because I had some wonderful uh, seniors who were there when I was freshman. And so I, I find that it, that's kind of the spot where I feel like I am now in education, the idea about giving back and trying to be able to reach out to others. And I think that's a lot why I do some of the things like why I podcast, why I try to blog, why I have my website, why I love going to workshops and such to try to be helping each other's out, help all of us out. That's really huge. And, you know, that creates a better environment for everyone and the whole system when you're willing to go and do things like that. So tell me what kinds of technology tips and things that you use in your classroom that you think maybe are necessary to reach like a new generation of learners and some of the things that you do, because you do quite a bit. I've seen your games. I've seen your lessons. I've yeah. seen your, some of your videos. Tell, tell our audience some of that and maybe where they can find it if they want to find some of your resources. Well, first off, thanks for the shameless plug. Yes, yeah, so that's my website, creativeedtech.com. And uh, everything I have there. So I do podcasting. Uh, I started off with the uh, world. Of, uh, what got me into technology was doing game shows, the classic Jeopardy so and fun. realizing that Jeopardy, yeah, it's fun. And I thought, boy, the kids are engaged, but how can I go to the next step? Uh, I often share the story that my rock bottom, the worst I ever got was playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire because I got excited about the game, but I realized it's one kid. And 34 are watching, and, and I thought that they were all being super engaged, but I'm like, it's still, they're not. So all of my games now I, I do is try to be able to get everybody involved. So if I'm going to be doing a family feud kind of a game or a heads up game or something like that, how you can be able to really, it's about the classroom dynamics and the questions that you're asking as opposed to the novelty of, of the game. And so that's one of the things, regardless of the technologies that you're using, is what kind of... Um, um, be, 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 be care of the shiny, flashy, you know, colors and sounds, but, but what makes it real useful. And so I went from games 
And uh, I love templates. I, I'm a big fan of the Google uh, the Google Docs world. And so check out my website. I got tons of, if you want to be able to get your kids uh, looking at Google Slides different ways about how to be able to be, have them be creators of content. So I created a bunch of these templates that you can do magazines and comic books or make your own Facebook account for a historical character and things like that. And I think I've taken off the burden of how to be able, what's the structure like and have the kids be able to put in the content and then tweak it a little bit. That's so great. I love systems like that. I create a lot of stuff too and on Hogger History on Teachers Pay Teachers where it's like plug and go. And I have piles of like seven different piles of always ready to go materials. So when I hit a subject and realize, wow, the textbook's a little shallow here or wow, I wish they had more depth. You hand it out and maybe it's a Socratic seminar. We show a video, we critique the speaker or maybe it's a debate form, you know, and they can pre-fill a pro and a con and really dive deeper and have, I love what you said, have them be able to fill in those spaces and know how to use those templates and just learning will happen. Learning will follow if you give them good systems yeah that's a, I, I don't use that word much but i really like that idea about systems and if we, we often try to be able to think that the kids can create those systems but i think we need to create those <laughs> those digital playgrounds and then put them in there i often use the term sandbox like in this sandbox just with with the younger ones in the sandbox i want to put the toys i want to put the things and then let them go but i can't just say hey kids just go and have this unstructured, go make something. And you often hear some people say, you know, kids of the day, they, kids of the day, they can make anything. They're digital natives. And you're, I'm like, actually, no, <laughs> you know, just tell a kid to go just open up and hey, go open up Adobe Photoshop and like, no, they're going to need some assistance. And so I think that's kind of our job is to help them a little bit about giving some of those assistance and structures. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And I'll tag on to something you said earlier about growth continuing to develop in advance. If one of the things that I didn't know starting teaching with the background in broadcasting is how explicit you need to be, right, with instructions or setting up a system or explaining what you what it is that you expect. Because in my mind, I know what I expect them to do. And then I realized how much you need to be like, no, I need you to do this in this spot and research this and fill out these details in depth, right? It's all those little clarification steps where if you lose it and then they turn in something, you're like, how did, where's the effort? But you realize the effort needed to be in the instructions really, right? To, to set those expectations. Danny, I swear, you and I completely flipped. Like in my world, I taught history for 18 years and I'm okay. teaching broadcasting. Oh, and, wow. and people are asking like, how's it going after you switched? And I'm like, uh, hmm. My advanced kids, I'm finding more challenges with because I've given them a lot of freedoms and opportunities. And what I'm getting back in return is I'm like, it's not going well. But my entry level classes are the ones where I have really dived into our learning management system and the use of hyperdocs where I'm creating structured lessons, giving them exactly expectations of things that I want. And then I could be able to walk around, work the room and the kids know everything from how to turn in every assignment. It's the same way. It's very much a Google Classroom feel. So I give them the document. They got to be able to do certain things, X, Y, and Z, make a video, answer this, read that thing, and then turn it back to me. And that's going fantastic. And I'm sitting here. I got a week left before I go uh, before winter break. And I'm like, I think I want to be able to really change up my advanced classes because it's just like it's exactly what you said. Like, I need to be able to be more clear. I'm taking not necessarily giving them the blame. I think it's not. It's me. I got to be able to, to, to help with the instructions and expectations a lot more. And that just takes a lot of, I don't say there's work, but just thought, I guess. So what I'm learning from you is 18 years in, you're still learning and still informing and still taking feedback and designing, right? Oh, hands. I, I think all of us know that the, yeah, for you to be successful, you want to continue to be on that path. Now, for me, my path, I also wanted to change a lot, too. I wanted to teach it, be football, and then I scrapped that. I wanted to be history. Then I said, scrap regular history. I want to be all in on teaching AP. So I was all into AP history. And then I said, scrap that. I'm going to be a tech TOSA. And so I worked at the district office for three years, being a technology toaster, trying to help people out. And then I said, OK, forget that. Back to high school and teaching <laughs> broadcasting. Pretty cool. Through that process, has the why of teaching stayed the same for you? Is your goal in education still the same? And what is your why for teaching? Uh, that's a great question. Yes, it stayed the same. I didn't necessarily know it for a long, long time, but it's to be able to, um, uh, you know, you know, the hallmark answer is to be able to help kids improve and succeed. But the why to do it is, I think, is is engage, making kids uh, connect with something on campus. If they can connect with your class, your uh, you as a teacher connect, they're not going to connect with your content. But so how can we be able to make connections? And, and if a kid can connect you with you, they can connect, then they can start to be able to learn the subject a little bit. And I think that um, technology helps with that. Uh, 
but um, it, nothing nothing takes away from good teaching. So I think that um, we keep putting kids at the at the front. And what are ways that we can be able to to, to make those connections? Um, is my why. That's really great. I like that a lot. Can you give us an example of a student who you think really that connection was home for them, was important for them, and you have a story of them like going out and, and doing things that you find successful or coming back and thanking you? Is there a one story you could pinpoint and share with us? Uh, yeah, fantastic. It was one of the, uh, uh, I originally started teaching. I was in Reno, Nevada, and I just had a student reach out to me from um, 16 years ago. And he said, uh, I'm so glad I found you. I've now moved states. And he was a kid who struggled a lot. He was an extremely techy young man, but very, his social skills were, were struggled. And um, uh, he had a hard time connecting with absolutely anybody. But I had a computer lab. We were running Windows 3.1. And he was my guy who helped me. He loved working on computers. And even though we didn't talk a whole bunch, I had him talk, you know, work with him. He was terrible in my history class, but I'm like, hey, you want to be my TA? And, you know, working with me and help build this lab and had a really neat connection with him that I kind of knew was always there, even though he never really responded a whole bunch back to me. And he sent me an email uh, about two months ago. And I had not heard from this kid in 16 years. And he goes, I don't know if you remember me. And then he writes me, you know, you know, 12 paragraphs about where he is with his life. And he where he's an IT professional nowadays. And I'm sitting there. This is my wife. And I'm tearing up. I'm like, uh-huh. reach out to me. And I'm like, she's like, oh, my God, I remember that kid. And it was uh-huh. just like. And, he, and one of his lines, I don't, I don't know word for word, but he said, he goes, you didn't know what kind of an impact you had on a, uh, on a young man. And I just want to be able to reach out and say thank you. And so I think one of the things when I like to go out and talk to people is, is for us to, even as educators, to reach back out. And I've now, because of that and some other things in my life, I've reached out to some of my past professors, reached out to past some of my lead teachers. And I can't tell you, I, I just reached out to a, a year ago to the first principal who hired me. And I just said, I just want to say thanks. You know, you took a risk. And I was a horrible teacher. Like I, I was a football guy. And why you took it, you thought that I could be, have a history job. Yeah. You, you changed my life forever. And she wrote back and it was just it was mm. amazing. And the wonderful tech world we have today, we can find these people. You've got Facebook, you can, there's yeah. websites, you can find these people. And so that, that's a big thing is we can reach out and say, thanks. Um, it, 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 it's going to make them feel great, but gosh, you know, what it's going to do for you is pretty incredible. That's really, really, really nice. I like that a lot. So before we let you go, I just want to know two more things. One is, if a student's leaving your classroom after a year, what's uh, one thing that you would like them to have learned from you aside from just the curriculum that you taught? That's a big question. (laughs) Um, um, Learn from me is, I don't know, maybe about um, how to be able to connect and be kind to others. It's big. It's good in our world today to be able to do that. Yeah. And the idea that we see a lot of negative conversations and it's, it's in the, uh, how they talk to each other, how we all talk to each other. uh, Not say just they, some, I I do the thing that frustrates me a bit. We talk about them as a separate species, but how we talk to each other digitally, you know, we're, we're often much more cruel and we're much more cutting. And the idea that, uh, if we could, if we could be better with each other and, and talk to each other, more kind words, I think that's something that we can all work on. And so I try to be able to be, a, I try to be able to have a kind place in my classroom. And I hope some of them um, realize that, that, that we all can sort of be better to each other. That's inspiring. That's Ryan O'Donnell. Ryan, where can people find your resources once again, if they're looking for them, there's some really great stuff that you've compiled. Let them know where they can find it, please. Actually, I've got a bunch of things, but creative ed tech is where everything is kind of housed. Uh, like I said, I, uh, I love to blog. I love to podcast. Podcasting is my passion. So I have a, a couple of podcasts. To look, check out, check this out. It's a podcast. Uh, Brian Briggs and I talk about cool technology innovations that are happening in the world. Also a podcast for you, social studies teacher called talking social studies. And, uh, also on Twitter, I'm kind of, I, I've tried to be on there a bunch, but it's a little bit hard, but that's also at creative ed tech. Very cool. Same here. And thanks for doing everything that you've done. See, I know a lot of your students have thanked you, but I'll thank you today for being a part of this show and for inspiring someone else because someone's going to see this and get a great idea from you. So I hope we can talk to you more down the road. And I appreciate you being on Inspiring Teachers today. Hey, Danny. Hey, thanks for reaching out, man. This was an awesome opportunity. I think, you know, there's a phrase we throw out on Twitter. It's the hashtag better together. And, you know, and thanks for reaching out. We really are. Absolutely. And we hope to talk to you again soon. And for everyone else, this is Danny Hogger for Tavis Bean for Ryan O'Donnell. We'll see you on the next edition of Inspiring Teachers. Don't forget to support the Hogger History Store. Like and subscribe. Danny Hogger Music's on iTunes. And we'll see you on our next edition. This is Inspiring Teachers in Class is dismissed.